Rick, great to see you, man. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. We're doing great. Uh, you know, you're, you're still so highly thought of in St. Louis to the point that any great throw from a deep outfield spot brings up your name, as we saw with Dylan Carlson over the weekend. I know you're still tuned into the Redbirds. That's the team that we'll always remember you with. What do you make of some of the young players and, uh, and what they're doing this year? They have a tremendous amount of young talent. I mean, you look at it last year, the gold gloves that were won uh, by the young guys with Edmund, you know, um, Bader, Tyler O'Neill, but they have some serious young talent coming on that team. And I think it's the perfect mix. When you talk about Wayne Wright, Yadier Molina, Albert Pujols coming back this year, the fact that those guys are going to be able to mentor those guys and help them, I, I think it just, you know, it can make all the difference for that club for sure. You, you know, you talk about the, the senior statesmen there, the older guys. I mean, it's pretty amazing that, look, your last year in St. Louis was, was 09, and Yachty's still there, and Wainwright's still there, and Albert came back. That's got to be a strange thing for you who's been retired for a number of years to get your head around. Uh, I think the strangest thing is just watching those guys still play. I know how I feel when I wake up in the morning and I feel like maybe I could do it for one day, but not 162 <laughs> days in a row. That's for sure. You did kick the tires at some point uh, on a comeback, an official comeback after your last big league year in 2013. Was it just the physical, the physical nature of playing every day that prevented you from coming back? No, so I ended up, uh, I pitched in a game. I felt good. You know, I have went through the throwing issues when I was younger as a pitcher before I became an outfielder, but I felt like I was in a position to handle that, the anxiety that comes with that, the pressure of it. Um, and what happened was I ended up having to have a second Tommy John, um, and I still tried to go through the process, but uh, had a delay in the comeback. I would have missed the entire next season, and I figured, you know what, it's time to be dad. I've had enough. Well, I know that we visited with you uh, here on your book a number of times. It's called The Phenomenon, and you talk about, uh, you know, the yips, what you had to deal with uh, from an approach standpoint to play. But let me tell you, dude, we saw the first pitch ceremony. Looks like you're, you're ready to roll. Like, it looks like you could just unwrap it and go right back out there. Do we have the first pitch that Rick threw? I mean, this is, this is right? The yak are still there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what a cool moment. I got to throw that pitch out there with my kids right there next to me. That was uh, that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. That's great. Yeah, I know that, uh, you know, being a dad consumes all of us that have kids, but uh, are you coaching? Are you involved in your kids' youth sports careers? I am. So um, my youngest one plays – well, he plays everything, but he plays baseball. Matter of fact, they got a playoff game tonight. So I help coach that team. Uh, my other son, he's into football and basketball. So – I watch those sports. I don't know. I don't know much uh, enough about those sports to be the coach, but it's been fun being out there and be, being able to be with them. Well, here's something that you definitely know more about than most of us, and that is playing at the highest level on both sides of the scorecard, which you did. And you watch Shohei Otani, who won an MVP last year, doing what you did at, at the same really high level. What do you think of when you watch Shohei? Oh my gosh. I mean, the talent is just oozing out of him. Um, for me, I think it's the coolest thing in the world. Obviously, I, I pitched at a separate time than I hit, uh, but would have loved to have been able to have the chance to do it at the same time. But when I watch him, I, I feel like it's jaw dropping. I mean, here's a guy who has the talent to win a Cy Young and possibly win the batting title or the home run crown. Uh, in the same year. I mean, it's absolutely incredible how talented this guy is. Yeah, and he steals bases, too. I mean, it's it's amazing, the skill set. What do you think is the biggest challenge for him as he continues to try to do both and, and pitch every six days? I think it's the legs. Um, I know looking at it for me, um, you know, thankfully for him, there's a DH. I know if I would have tried to do it at the same time, I think my legs would have been too tired, especially trying to play outfield. Even when I was a position player, let's say I tried to go play golf in the morning, my legs would be tired and I could feel it. So I couldn't do that. So I, I think for him, it's going to be protecting those legs. Um, other than that, I mean, look, he's with the right people. He's with Joe Madden. Uh, you know, he's an outside the box thinker, but I love what they've done this year, which is basically just like, we're going to let you play. And if we need to tailor it back, we will, but go out there and be a ball player, and that's exactly what he's doing. You know, another thing that you can share some really unique insight uh, with is the, the idea that for a young player in pro sports, in baseball, the pressure is such that it can really do things to your performance. I mean, if you were to advise a young player who's grinding right now, who's, who's pressing, is there, a, 
Is there kind of a crash course in it? Is there something you could say within a minute or two to help? Or is, is that just <laughs> hours of counseling? Um, I mean, listen, remember that it's supposed to be fun. Um, and I know that being successful is fun, but at the same time, remember it is a game. I, I think the hardest thing is, especially right now, there's more pressure than there's ever been. We talk about social media. I mean, when a guy gets to the big leagues right now, you can almost see every swing he's taken since high school, right? It's so hyped up by the fans, by the cities. Um, to me, there's more pressure now than ever. Just remember that it's a game. Uh, remember that it's a process. You don't have to be good right away. I think, you know, when you look at her, when I look at it, when you see your Harpers come up and your Sotos come up and some of these young superstars who really do get off to an amazing start. And then you see other guys who go out there and struggle uh, and who are having a hard time with it. Just remember, it's supposed to be a game. You're not always going to be great that first step. And a lot of the adversities that you're going through now will just help you be stronger later on in your career. Yeah, I guess the off-season stuff, the away from the field stuff becomes more important. The golf, the fishing. Not everybody's lucky enough to go on a fishing expedition with Tony La Russa and Jimmy Leland. But, you know, we, we go fish. Pond in a pool, the pool would be good for you. Uh, tell us about <laughs> the photo we're going to show everybody here with you and, and Jimmy and Tony. Let's see the let's see the photo. I got to see it first. I think we locked okay. up. There was a we you know we troll everybody's social media accounts on this network. Here it mm -hmm. is. When was this and and how'd you hit them that day? Um, all right, so that was in Vegas, um, and that's Leland's son with us. Also, I hit him okay. It was fun. Um, it was a it was an MLB event, so we were out there chopping it up, hitting it around. But always good to uh, share time with two of the two of the baseball's great legends. You know, coaches of all times. When you talk about leaderships and championships and how they go about the way they wanted to run that team and treating people. Um, you know, you, I've learned a lot by being able to be around those guys. And um, that was just a fun day where you, there's no pressure and now you can make fun of them when they don't perform and get something done or hit a bad shot. I uh, love it. I mean, you know, you, playing golf with others and fishing with yourself. I mean, that's how I do it too. Uh, what is this that you pulled in and was it real? Cause it looks like something you'd catch at Disney. So that's a peacock bass, and we have them in South Florida. Um, they really come from South America, but they were brought over here. So about from Miami up to Boynton, maybe a little bit farther than that. You can find them in the canals down here in Lake Ida. So I was with a friend. I was with my sons that day, and that's, uh, that's the biggest peacock bass that I've ever caught. But my real love is saltwater fishing offshore for dolphin, tuna, wahoo. Um, there you go. That's a wahoo there. I got a chance. Uh, I was just in the Bahamas last week. Got a chance to catch some dolphins and tuna. So that's my first love when it comes to fishing is offshore. That's great. Man, you Florida boys. You guys are always fishing, having a great <laughs> life. I love it. Hey, Rick, thanks for the visit, man. It's always good to catch up with you. Your insights are appreciated, and uh, we love chatting with you. Thanks for the time. Thanks, Maddie. I appreciate it, man. Have a good one.